All right, what's up, everybody? Today's day 185, make a song bringer, and I've been working this weekend on this new type of file format that stores data more efficiently than JSON. So um, JSON is cool, but there's two problems with JSON. Um, one, you've got all these characters you have to type in that just are annoying, right? You've got all these curly braces and stuff you've got to type in. Um, colons, you got to put things in quotes and stuff like that. That's just like not that, it's not that, you can't be that lazy with it. So this is an example of this form, file format. All you got to do is store your data in text and it works by, um, by basically um, anything that's indented gets put into a, into as a child of what it is above it. And anything that has actual, an actual value separated by some white space becomes a key value pair. So it's really, really simple. Really, really like ultra simple data format. Look at how simple this is. It's great. So I've been working on getting the game all switched over. So all my profiles in the game for characters, like for example, here's the blob. The blob has its animations, attributes, sounds and even its behavior now is all inside this one single file which makes it a lot easier when I want to go create a new enemy for example I want to create a like all last week I was creating new enemies um, all I gotta do is create a single file now which is just great and it's all in this awesome data file format so that um, it's just really efficient so if, for example if this were all JSON I would have um, you know you know what I mean you know what JSON looks like so um, I wrote this class to read and write these kind of files and it's even got an iterator and everything. It's super, super cool class. So what I'm going to do is publish it on GitHub for free right now. So that's what I'm doing today. Publishing Valtry. So the first thing I want to do is go and create separate files for it. Yo, what's up, Momir? How you doing today, man? Yeah, yep, I just started, man. I'm publishing this new class called Valtry. Yo, what's up, Slow Excellence? Welcome, you guys. Yep, I just started, and I'm publishing this Valtry thing to GitHub right now. Um, basically, it's a file format that's more efficient than JSON. You can be super lazy with it. Yeah, I'm good, man. Super great. Yeah. Hey, what's up, Ben? Ben W. Apples. 420. Whoa. Oh, sorry, guys. What's up, Ethan? You found out where I got the art style for my game. What do you mean? All right, yeah, welcome welcome to the stream, the live stream, Ben Apples. Um, so yeah, what I'm doing right now is publishing this Valtry. I'm gonna go and start moving this. Wait, I already did that. Add this to all the targets. Yeah, Ethan, there's a lot of games out there that have this kind of art style. And um, I've openly said this many, many times that my game is like Crawl. It's also like Hyperlight Drifter. It's also like Children of Morta. Um, there's so many games that are use a pixel art aesthetic. Um, crawl game, this is an awesome. If you guys have, haven't seen this game, Crawl is awesome. And definitely, I've my art style has been very influenced by this game. This is called Crawl. This is a super awesome dungeon crawler. Um, I own this game. I play this game a lot. It's great. Um, also, check this out. There's um, Children of Morta. Also a huge influence on me for Songbringer. Um, 
So if you guys haven't seen this game, this is really, really great. This is a little bit more um, detailed of a pixel art aesthetic. Their, their resolution of their pixels they use is a lot um, more detailed. So um, Children of Morta is a great one. Um, what else was I just saying there? There's Hyperlight Drifter. There's so many great pixel art games out there. So they're all influences. Oh, you refunded it? Oh, that sucks, man. Those developers are sad. Oh, how did the jitters look in the end? Oh, it's Wapples, not Apples? Okay, Wapples. Did I say that right? Yeah, the jitters turned out great. Um, well, I just added this class. Let me show you in a second. Let me get this compiling again. Oh, wait, no, I think I can do this. I can go product, um, run without building. There we go. Yeah. And let's see if we can find some, some jitters. They turned out great. They're these hopping type of enemies. This is one thing I really need to improve about this game is where it places enemies. Right now, it's kind of... Um, it's kind of boring in that it places a lot of the same kind of enemies right next in, in similar areas. So like around this area, there's always going to be blobs. Here's some jitters. They're great. They're kind of fun. You never know when they're going to jump, so... They're a lot like the spider from, from Zelda. Nice, right on. Okay, so yeah, once again I'm publishing this new file format um, called Valtry. And what this allows me to do is to store data more efficiently than JSON. And what's great is I can I can put all of my, um, for example, all of the information for blob is now all in one file. So instead of having a separate profile, separate property list, it's all here. And what's great, so what sucks about JSON is that you've got all this extra data. But secondly, you don't have no idea about the order in which something is going to appear in a JSON file. Same thing with XML. You're not guaranteed how it will load it, which is a super drawback. So what this new format, Valtry, allows you to save files in text, and then it loads them all in order. So this is incredibly important for loading a behavior tree, for example. Behavior tree needs to be in order. So that's why I created this format. Sweet. Thanks, man. Yeah, Ethan, it's probably going to be more like January, but yeah. So today's going to be mostly a code day while I publish this Valtry, and then tomorrow I'll be back into creating more um, enemies and stuff. Yay, I'm glad you like code days. 
Yes, of course. Link will all you want, man. Alright, we got this header started. I'm going to remove it from kit header. Get this ready to share. Cool. Looks like a sweet game. Iterator usually is normal lowercase, but in this case, um, the the class name is not necessarily always lowercase. But what, usually, what it, what happens is they'll they'll typecast it. And then it'll be typecast to a lowercase iterator. Or, anyways, I'm not purposely not lowercasing iterator because I want it to be um, obvious that it's a class. Yeah. Okay, so soon I'll have this up on GitHub so you guys can check it out if you want. Okay, let's see if that's all working. So all I've done so far is I've removed it from kit and I moved, put it into valtree.cpp. Looks like we do have some errors, so. Oh yeah, I'm gonna need to add this into There, so I'm putting this right into my kit header so that it gets pre-compiled. League of Dungeon? There's not a, that, seriously, there can't be a game named League of Dungeon. That's not cool, really? Somebody took Legend of Dungeon and turned it into League of Dungeon? You mean Legend of Dungeon? Because Legend of Dungeon is an awesome game by my friends, Robot Loves Kitty. I'm glad there's no League of Dungeon game. Oh, you, you mean Dungeon League? Yo, what's up, Zatrick? All right, so if this still compiles, then we're ready to put this. Yeah, it's, we're looking good, okay. So, good, good, good. I'm about to put this up on the GitHub in a second. All right, cool, we're still compiling. That means I can go and create a make file or add a, add a make script. So I'm going to add a make for Valtry, and I'm just going to copy my, my files into, 
going to make a directory for this. Yeah, cool. I got a folder for Valtteri now. So this is going to be in projects. I think it's projects classes. Yeah. Cool. All right. Cool, 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 cool. So now I've got a make file. So if I ever make changes to Valtry, I can just go and publish them really easily. Okay. So I'm going to create a readme now. All right, so put to put in this readme. Um, I'm just gonna put a simple description. Actually, no, you know what? I'm just gonna start with that and start by um, creating this repository and pushing it onto GitHub so you guys can see it all. What's a make file? You should look that up, man. It's a thing that creates, it's like a, it's just basically a, it allows you to do a bunch of easy little scripts by calling make. You should look it up. Okay, so I wanna be able to create an upstream, here, get remote add origin. And then I'm going to do this git push u origin master thing, which is works for my first push and then subsequent pushes I can just call git push. Sweet. Okay, I think we're good to go here. We should have Valtry up here. Yeah, there you guys go. All right, cool. Here is Valtry. You guys can check it out. All right, so yeah, I'm good today, Ethan. Of course, always good. Okay, now I'm going to create a readme for it. So this is, um, basically this is the gist right here. Valtree is a file format for storing key value pairs in a hierarchy. More efficient than JSON. Two problems with JSON. One. Um. Mm. How do I word this? I'm trying to word this so with JSON, basically you have to use a bunch of characters and stuff like that. Hello, static. What's up, man? Hola, muchacho. Welcome. Welcome to the live stream. 
I'm making a game called Songbringer, and this is day 185 making Songbringer. And I'm working on a, a bit of code today. So a lot of times I'm working on art, sometimes I'm working on code. Today's all about code because I'm publishing a new file format for saving files really efficiently. It can be annoying to have to format data using braces, colons, and quotes. Basically, that's it. Um, So valid tree solves the two issues by making it more simple to create. Valtry stores files any file extension. Um, static, by the way. If you didn't see this, this is what I'm working on right now. I'm publishing this a little. Later, Ethan. See you, man. Mm, all right. So here's an example file for Valtry.
All right, so I'm gonna kind of like explain what this means here. Uh, no, it doesn't have to be tabs. That's a good good question, right? Yeah, so if it wasn't tabs, it would just be um, spaces. So a space would be the equivalent of a tab. Yes, exactly, Zatrick. This is my behavior file format, and I took that behavior file format and made it able to use... I can, I can use it now for everything with this Valtry thing. So now I put, like, for example, here is... Um, Here's the behavior tree and the profile now in one single file for this the spider sack. So here's the animations, here's attribute sounds, and here's the exist what was the existing behavior file is now a part of this file. So it makes it easier when I want to create new enemies. So if I want to create a new type of enemy, it's all in one file, which also is a lot. E it's just way easier because I don't have to switch back and forth between so many different files when I'm creating it, right? And I only have to copy and create one new file. So all in all, this is just really, really awesome. I'm excited about it. Yeah, no more plist files. None of those. Um, yeah, it is very nice. It's, it's more cross-platform as well. And it's just, I don't know, plist files were very Xcode-centric. So it's nice to be kind of moving away from that because plist files were also kind of annoying to try and edit in Xcode, and so this is just way easier to edit stuff and copy stuff, too. So for example, in Xcode, you couldn't copy more than one um, key at a time if it was part of if it was part of the same parent. So if I, I couldn't go and copy frame, delay, and format all at once. <clears throat> hey, what's up, Arcane? I'm working on um, this new file format called Valtry. I just published it on GitHub, and I'm working on a README for it right now, so I can kind of explain what it is. But really, it's just it's just a file format that's a little more simple than JSON, and I'm sharing the C++ code for it. So, all right. Oh yeah, you're welcome. Of course. I just hope this saves people time because this took a few days to write this. And I just want, you know, if, if people want to use this, feel free, go right ahead. King Nothing, uh, when you serialize it, is it binary on disk? No, um, it's not. I don't, well... Yeah, no, it's it's definitely not binary. It's text mode. Yeah. Good question. Very good question. So it's meant to be text mode, so just keep all this data um, really, really easy to access, right? No matter what platform you're on, you should be able to open up a text file pretty easily. And you should most platforms have a default text editor which can open text files. So this that's why it's that's why I encourage people to use a text file with it. So um, yeah, really good question. Am I going to pack it somehow when shipping it? No, I'm not. Uh, and I, I'm purposely doing that. I'm purposely leaving all of the files for Songbringer open um, so that it's easy to hack the game. Um, and most people won't even ever know that it's that easy to hack, but some people will love tinkering with the game. And um, how I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make it so, because there's a couple things with Songbringer, like achievements and the leaderboard, where I don't want people to hack the game and then submit like an awesome score to the leaderboard or whatever. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll do some kind of checksum on all of these important files like behaviors and profiles and all that. So if the, if the game matches its checksum, then it's okay and it can, submit, um, it can submit new achievements and new high scores. But if not, then it just 
automatically in the background doesn't ever submit those. So nobody will be able to cheat and submit high scores based on changing their their behaviors or whatever of enemies. Oh, right, right, yeah. King Nothing, that's a good question. Oh, I just answered that, so I hope that makes sense, yeah. It'll do, I'll use a checksum to basically keep this, keep it from doing that. Yeah, I want this game to be hackable, basically. But I also respect that I don't want people to be able to cheat and get crazy high scores. What's up, Nano? It was your first day of school? Sweet, man. What grade are you in now? Okay. Yeah, the parser is built right into Valtry. Yeah, good question. Cool, you're in sixth grade? Right on, man. That's awesome. So yeah, the parser is built right here into Valtry. There's a function called parse. And all you gotta do is call parse with the file name of whatever you want to load and it will parse out all of that data into a Valtry. And what's really cool about a Valtry is it's a recursive type of class. So um, you can, when you load a Valtry, it is a self-contained unit which has its own children and siblings. So, um, so, so all you need is access to one Valtry and that can get you access to its children or siblings or whatever. So loading a Valtry is the same as loading like a, a whole dictionary or a map or whatever. Yes, I'm going to use it for string localization. I haven't done that yet, but I am using it for config files already. So um, like settings.txt is already, this used to be a property list two days ago. Now it's a Valtry. And this, this is a really simple Valtry in that there's no indentation. It's just that everything is a sibling. And so let me show you the code that actually loads that. So um, you guys were asking about parsing and stuff. This is how easy it is. I have a Valtry called settings, which is right here. It's a static of the game. And set, I just call settings.parse at the very beginning of the, of the game. And it loads those settings into that Valtry. And then when I want to get a setting, all I got to do is call... Um, Go like get sibling. Where let me show you that. So then, yeah. So here is I, I call settings dot get sibling key dot get int. So it's a pretty cool recursive type of class. Nice, right on. Sweet, good for you. High school level coding. Dumb tar, this is a really good question. Why not just JSON? Very, very good question. That's the first thing I'm answering here in the readme. The pro there's two problems with JSON. One is that in JSON, you can't be lazy. You gotta, you gotta format all your data with braces and colons and quotes and all that stuff. And that just makes it so you can't be lazy. Um, and secondly, the order of data loaded with JSON is not guaranteed. So this is really important for my behavior trees. Behavior trees, um, for example, here's the behavior tree for the Kratu, this new enemy. Um, this has to be in order because stuck is a higher priority than choose a higher priority than charge, and all these are going to select, select. So this has to be done in order. And a JSON file does not guarantee that. That's the reason I created my own file format for behaviors in the first place. So basically what I'm doing here is I'm just, I'm just taking my behavior, my behavior tree file format and making it public and sharing it with everyone. So 
Um, yeah, so I'm just trying to write a simple README file, and I'll put this up there too. So hopefully this kind of this are, it's great for you guys. Have you guys answer all or ask all these questions so I can try and make this README file better. Basically, yeah, yeah. So tabs are spaces can be used in indent. Cool, good. Oh, great. I hope this does save you some time. So yeah, after, so first you have the, the key, and then you have as many tabs or spaces as you want. So you could, you could do like that, and that would be the same thing as, you know? These are all, I'm just going to leave it like that though. Comments. Hmm. Yeah, that's such a good point, right? I could totally add that in Momir. Yeah, I could add comments pretty easily. I think I'll add this to the next version. That's a good good call. Very good call. Oh, Zatrick, he's yeah. He's he, yeah, it's a good point right here, right? But well, I think what you're saying is it's sometimes nice to comment data. So sometimes you're like, mm. It's true, if you have an awesome design. You're not really going to need to comment it, but sometimes you do need to do that. You know, like, hey, blah, 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 this, this, this means that, or whatever. It can be really nice. Does it support a value of an array list? Yes. Um, but it's all through maps. So I guess technically, no, it does not support arrays, but it supports um, named arrays. In a, or in essence, dictionaries or maps. So basically, this is an array right here. Um, sounds. Here's the array, which you know, sounds is basically an array with named value pairs. If you wanted to do an array-like thing, a more array-like thing, you could do like this is this is an array. Here's value zero, value one, value two, blah blah blah. blah. So yeah, you could do arrays. Ah, uh, yeah. So 
So values can be strings Values can be strings, integers, or floats. Read the value as a string, then also Yeah, key one, key two, val one, val two, val three would be useful. Yeah, it does do that. Yep, that's the way it works right now. So here's here's key, here's, here's exactly that. Key one is collision, val one is 15 comma nine. But you know, key two is health, val two is 12. Let's do some example code. Hey, what's up, SCB? Huh, yeah. Yeah, that could be a, that could be something to add. Let me add um Let me add these I'm going to add these straight into the readme like to do items. Add the ability to comment and Yeah, both these are pretty easy operations, actually. If I just took the, right now it has the ability to, to read siblings. So for example, all siblings, uh, underneath attributes, these four things are all siblings. Collision, health, dormant, move, all those are siblings of each other. Um, it would be really easy if to return these as a vector of either values or their keys. So you could get a vector of this, that, that, and that, or you can get a vector of that, 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 and that. That would be a simple two methods to add. I like that. That would, I think that would, um, that would help, uh, help out. That would solve what Dumbtard's asking here. And uh, yeah.
Yeah, kind of like any files. But I think any files had a still had a col like a colon right or something or an equals sign. Okay, so here let's load a val tree. So we'll use this same example from above as the example file. Equal, yeah, they had equal signs. Right, 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 yeah. So a lot of, um, yeah. It's basically like that without, but instead of an equal sign, you just have white space, yeah. Hmm. Oh, I should mention the difference between siblings and children up here. So children are So yeah, Val siblings are the same depth level. Um, parsing of So yeah, I hope this makes sense. When it parses, it puts um, siblings, all siblings underneath this in underneath the same one. So for example, B right here is a val tree object, and then C, D, E, and F are all all um, children, right? So so C basically C is the first child, and so its siblings are D, E, and F. D, E, and F are all siblings underneath C, but E and F are not underneath D. So when you want to access all the siblings, you want to use the first element. Yes, exactly. Yeah, so it's not, it's not meant to parse out a behavior tree, for example, it's just meant to give you that data as a string. So if you wanted to take movement 90, not comma 90, you, your, your val tree would give you back a key of movement and a data string of 90 comma 90. And yes, you would basically have to take, do some more work to parse 90 comma 90 into whatever the heck that meant for your application. And in my game, that would basically parse that into a vector by just splitting, the, splitting it by the comma. So yes, very good question.
So let's get the sibling underneath A of G. Let's do this. Let's make it really simple. So H is V dot get sibling G dot get sibling H. No, 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 let's get child. So, okay, we've retrieved one value. Let's do um, storing a new value. So we'll do L, which would kind of like put it on the very end of everything. L and its value is I don't know, whatever. 90 90. Actually, we can make this even even simpler. Um, we could go v dot add sibling and actually use a temporary value. v dot save. Bang, there we go. Cool. Okay, so let's add in an MIT license as well. Make this the most permissible license we can get. And we'll publish it. Whoa. All right, cool. So I can add this readme, or maybe I just already have it. Yeah, cool. All right, cool. So now the project should have a readme file, and I should probably comment out comment up the um, the header file. So it's just a lot more readable. So yeah, I'm gonna read through this one more time and try to make sure I'm, I answer most of your guys' questions too. Valtteri is a file format for storing key value pairs in the hierarchy, more efficient than JSON, and a C++ class to read write these files.
Have I ever read both? Uh, what's that? Bastard operator from hell. <laughs> Is there a certain Bafa that you're talking about? There's two problems with Jason. One, it can be annoying to have to format data using braces, colons, and quotes. You can't be lazy. Two, the order of data is not guaranteed. Valtry solves these two issues by making it more simple to type, create files, and guarantees the order of values. Example file. Valtry stores files with any file extension, though .txt is encouraged. Here's an example file. A, B, C, D, E. Tabs or spaces can be used to indent the data. The key can be any, um, <laughs> all right, we got, um, There we go. That kind of clarifies that a little bit more. Yo, what's up, Brandon Dyer? Man, I'm, I'm publishing this new format for, um, basically, this is my existing behavior tree file format, basically. And I, I made it easier. So instead of using property lists, which are kind of problematic in ways, I'm using um, this new file format for a combined property list and behavior tree. I'm also going to be using it for config files like settings and also the save games too. So here's actually the save game data is all now in this new file format. So what I'm doing right now is I'm sharing that all online on GitHub. So if you want to follow along, I'm right here on GitHub, NatWeas, Valtry. So I think that should clarify that a little bit. Let's publish that. Okay. Tabs or spaces can be used to indent. Each tab or space puts the current line of data as a child of a previous line, depending on depth. Data stored as key value pairs. After the initial tabs or spaces comes the key, and as many tabs or spaces as desired, then the value. The key can be any non white space character. The value is everything remaining on the current line after the key and some white space. Note the values can contain white space. Values can be strings, integers, or floats. When parsing, Valtry reads the value as a string. And also converts it to long and double using sir to l and sir to d. All three types of data are stored simultaneously as separate data members for quick access. Each Valtry is a self contained recursive class containing siblings and children. Children are Valtry objects stored at one level deeper than current. Siblings are Valtry objects stored at the same depth level. Parsing a Valtry puts all siblings inside the first Valtry object for convenience. Example code. Oh, no worries. Yeah, I was wondering if you had a certain BOFH story that you uh, wanted me to read or something. Here's some example code to load a Valtry, retrieve a value, store a new value, and save. Load parse the above example. Valtry v, v.parse, example.txt. 
retrieve a value, auto H. Hey, what's up, Achillium? It's going really good, man. I'm publishing this this uh, new thing on GitHub called Valtree, which is basically my, my file format for saving my behavior trees. So I kind of made it more universal, and I'm sharing it on GitHub. This retrieves a value, autoref h equals v dot get sibling g. Oh, this should now be g is long. Oh. All right, so that that should fix that little bit there. And then yeah. Out the value of h is h.getster and l store new value v.add sibling. Save the tree to a new file v.save. Cool. All right, and I want to put Valtry there. All right, cool. One last commit here. Okay, now I'm going to go and comment out the, um, the header file. So it's just a little bit more easy to read the header file. So if any, you know, it's basically will act as sort of a set, sort of a documentation. So if anybody goes and they just want to read valtree.h, they can kind of get a feeling for what it does and stuff. So I'm going to start off with moving the privates down. Yeah, yeah, the guy, the game, you're right. Oh, that's a good point, right? That's the way, oh my gosh, that could lead to um, a sort of an artificial intelligence of the game actually modifying itself, its behaviors of enemies and stuff. Totally, yeah, that's a really cool idea, Zatrick. I didn't even think about that, but yeah. It would, it would definitely add... Um, a really, it would be it would be difficult to um, to store leaderboard values and achievements at that point because I, I'm not sure how I would distinguish between what's an actual good leaderboard value and what's not because if the game could modify itself, then it would could change its own um, checksum values. So there'd be really no way to, to actually check. So man, that would be that'd be really cool though to be able to have the game actually change its behaviors. Wow, really cool idea. What's up, Teague? Welcome, man. Yes, yes, Brandon, I stand. Okay, so iterator. No, I was asking what what is B O F H? 
It's is there some particular one I need to read? I, I just saw the Wikipedia page for that, but it didn't mention a story or something I could read. So what what are you guys talking about here? Ah, oh, there we go. Okay. What's up, Lime Studios? Yeah, I started pretty late today. I think I got started around 5.30. I've only been streaming for an hour. So yeah, it's it's kind of, I'm, I'm super late today. Right, an old website, right? But is there, okay, cool, here we go. That's what I was asking. Nice, I'll check this out. I've never read this. Save that for later. No, no, it's not. No, I haven't seen that. I have not seen it crowd. Is this on Netflix? Oh, somebody rec yeah, somebody mentioned this a while ago. Maybe it was maybe it was you, Momir. Cool. Good. I, I need funny, cool stuff to watch. I run out of it all the time. Nice. Got to check that out. Oh, okay. Somebody must have mentioned it before. Ooh. Just realized. Yeah, Lime, Lime Studios, um, it's used for a lot of things. Um, it's basically is the format for my, um, for my behavior trees. So for example, this is, this used to be the thing where I would, I would put my behavior trees in a separate text file and this would read on my behaviors because, um, I couldn't use JSON and I couldn't use XML for creating behavior trees because both of those file formats do not guarantee the order in which something is loaded. And order is incredibly important to be to these behavior trees. So what I did is I took the behavior tree file format like this and made it more universal so I could put in more data. So like now I have my property, instead of having property lists, I used to use plist files for storing all the data for my enemies and stuff. Now I combined it all into one file. So behavior and the properties are all in one file. And also I can use it for config files like settings and also save games. 
it's just a really universal for file format that's super easy to use and um, and I'm sharing it on github all right excellent see you man good luck on your homework and stuff I think I messed up actually this Valtry is null. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. No, that's right. If the key and the value. Yeah, yeah. And so hopefully this is a nice thing for you guys to have access to this code too, because um, maybe you can use it in your own game. And also maybe you can help me make it better too. So feel free to submit, um, you know, pull requests or whatever on GitHub. Cool, we got some assignment operators. Comparison operators. I think all these should be... Mm, basically these gets I think are a little more fundamental. I'm going to put these before the sets. Getters. Add child, add sibling. These are more or less fundamental, so I'm put those farther down. These are actually pretty fundamental. So I'm gonna put these are these are more for like iterators. Actually, yeah, we can put the iterator farther down. Like we'll put the iterator class there and then the begin and end here. Okay, so that's the good return the size of the val tree. Here's return.
cool. I'm, I'm glad to be doing this header here. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, yeah, get to bed, man. Well, good night. Thanks for stopping by. All right, so return the first child. So returns a child object given there we go yo r2 what's up r2 check us out man watch this um Oh yeah, look at this. I got not only got movement, but check this out. I learned the search command in Vim. Oh, I wish, uh, one thing I wish about, about Vim is that when I searched, I wish it was clear where the heck the cursor moved to. Like if I search for the word blank, I really have to move the cursor up and down for a second to figure out where the heck it is. So that's one thing I wish. <laughs> you got a call from a client that said she wanted you to remake YouTube for under a grand. Oh, it's so hilarious. That's so funny how people think that kind of stuff, you know? All right, Ben. Good night, man. Thanks for stopping by and saying hi, man. Good night. Yeah, I'm getting more and more efficient with Vim. I started by... You're just learning the J, K, L, and, and H keys, which move your cursor around. That's that's just the, you know, highlighting on. Oh, thanks to Fool's Duty and R2. Okay, so let's do that. Wait, did I do that right? Probably not. Highlight search. Did I do that right? Oh, okay, so it underlines. Oh, that's nice. Okay, I'm adding that to my um, my VimRC. That should be on by default, don't you think? Okay, so let's do D again. Try that search. Yeah, that's cool. All right, so if I wanted to search for the word like construct, would it highlight all? Yeah, cool, it highlights all the words construct. That's rad, that's definitely rad. I wish it did a different color, but that's probably just in my, in my VimRC as well. Yeah, totally, okay, right. Oh yeah, well I'm using, um, yeah, Dumtar, thanks man. Um, I think I'm, I'm using one, what's the one I'm using? Hey, well, thanks for, for following. I'm using this one I found on the internet, which is supposed to be like, um, it's Monokai, yeah. 
I found this on the internet. I wonder if there's a simple way to just turn that back on where it can... I don't know. I guess I'll, I'll take a look at this later. This is kind of um, not super easy. Yeah, totally. Vim's learning great. Yeah. I need to get better at search and replace. That's my next thing. Yeah, Monokai's that Monokai came from TextMate, which I'm used to already. So that's why I get why I went with Monokai. But yeah, there's there's definitely some some problems with their with the, that color scheme. But yeah, I wish I was better at search and replace because the only search and replace I've seen is you have to like enter in a you have to like use um, regular expressions kind of. I wish there was a simpler search and replace. Like I just want to search. I want to search one thing and then replace another thing. Yeah. Is that, is that the easiest way to do it? I wish there was an easier way, basically. A more, a more, like, I want the search and replace for, di for dummies. Yeah. Okay, that's the whole file. Global, confirm. Oh, thanks, Zumtard. Is that part of my Monokai? Let me see if that worked. Hmm. That I might have put that in the wrong place because it doesn't look like that changed anything. No, I haven't. I haven't tried code or Adam. Hmm. Oh, okay. It might be different. Yeah. Huh. No, I haven't. I haven't even heard of code of, of code or Adam. Are you talking about Node.js based text editors? Yeah, I should make it. It publicly aware that anytime it returns a null val tree, it's a static. Yeah, Adam. Oh. Oh, it doesn't let you scroll though. Cool, I gotta check this out. So it's it's definitely not a terminal editor, it's a it's a like a actual application, right? <laughs> yeah. Sublime's good. I, I have Sublime or I have the free version of Sublime, but I, I bought TextMate a long time ago and I you know it's just there's nothing very vim vim like at all. It's it's a it's not a, a moded editor, but I'm used to it, so Genie, nice. All right, getting close to be able to publish this on on GitHub.
Yeah, I've heard of Nerd Tree. You complete me? Is that is that code completion? Oh, log. Log, that's one bug, because log is not defined. So we'll just go printf. And what do I need for printf again? Standard IO. I think it's standard IO. C header for printf yeah standard io macvim yeah i saw that one I guess I shouldn't be using standard IO. What's this what's the C header for um ah, man? Oh, IO stream, that's right. Wait, is that right? <laughs> Low music, yeah. You wrote, Ruby is a great language to start with, but it all it really depends on what kind of programming you want to do. So what what is it that you really want to do? Because that really depends on that will really kind of indicate what language you should probably learn. Yeah, Fool's Duo just said that too. Yeah, thanks, Momir. Oh yeah, well if that's what you want to do, if you want to do Ruby development, then yeah, it's a desirable position. It's a good language to know from what I from what I understand. I I don't even know Ruby myself, so Ah. Yeah, I I don't know. I yeah, I can't really comment either cuz I haven't used Ruby. Okay, so cool. I'm still got everything is compiling correctly. Game's all running just fine. I could publish this new version of Valtry. It's new header, all coming out. Oh, one last thing. Cool, here we go. All right, good, good. Um, let me go publish this new one, make bow tree. Nice, totally documented header file.
How do you like them apples? Here we go. You, so you think you want to go for games? Um, if you're going to go for games, probably not JavaScript, but C Sharp is a great one if you're going to be using Unity or XNA. Um, I, it sounds like you really should, should focus on really what you want to do first. Um, if you want to do games, cool. If you want to make money, then define what you what it is you want to do to make money. So yeah, I would I would start with that, defining what you really want to do. And if you don't know what you want to do, then play around with it all. Play around with Ruby. Play around with making games. Play around with different game engines. You know, play around until you get that feeling for what you really really want to do. True, yeah, JavaScript is becoming less crap all the time. <laughs> all right, so yeah, let's see if this is how this is looking now that we got this all self-documented. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yes, yes, I, I highly, highly... I want to highlight Lime Studio's comment here like like crazy. If you're going to load music, if you're going to be learning Unity, do not, whatever you do, do not learn Unity script. That's, that's, Unity has basically a couple different languages you can, you can script in. One of them they say is JavaScript, but it's not JavaScript. So don't ever learn it. If you're going to, if you're going to be doing Unity, just stick to C sharp. That's, that's the advice there. Yeah, this is some good advice here too. Yes, definitely, definitely. Yeah, as well as your research and playing with stuff, soul searching is a lot of it. Yeah. Cool, man. Good. Um, all right, so we got this self-documented Val tree. If anybody's just um, just getting to this. Um, stream and you're wondering what the heck's going on this is the this is what i'm working on spy more yo what's up man yeah me too i love it i love it love c plus plus man and what's great about c plus plus is it's been around for so long and it's still a really really popular language for writing stuff so so i learned this 20 years ago and it's still an excellent language to be to be developing in because game engines still use C++. Other engines still use C++. It's a very, very good popular language for many applications because it's so portable and it's so fast. <laughs> you hate C++? You think it's old school garbage like assembly? That's funny. <laughs> Yeah, it might not make the best language to start with, for sure. So we got a construct, copy constructor, destructor. I guess that should be number of siblings right there. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, it all depends, it all depends. Farzer, did you have some moment that really just made you hate C, C++ or something like that? I know what you mean. 
I definitely have that, those same feelings for other languages. Return a sibling, giving an index. Cool. I think this is good enough, man. Good enough for a first symbol implementation. Pointers, right? Nice, King Nothing. Right? You know, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I know. Assembly. Oh. At least it's not binary, though. Oh, it's because you had to implement the Steam C++ API? Oh, I know how you feel, man. I actually had a hate hate moment, too, when I had to do that, but I finally figured out how to get their dot .dilab loaded. I know what you mean, man. Yeah, you hate Java, right? We, we all have these hates, right? Man. What do I hate as far as programming languages? Ada. I hate Ada and COBOL. Linker errors, right? Yeah, that could be a nightmare. Cool. Well, I think I'm done. I'm th I'm pretty much done with this Val tree. So I'm gonna start drawing some stuff. How much time do I got left today? Maybe half an hour. Looks like. Yeah, I got a half an hour left. So I'm gonna draw some. This is cool. If anybody wants to um, uh, send me messages or issues or whatever this is the val tree repository it's up here public on github shared with y'all so i'm closing that for now whoops oh man i just killed my chat window dope sorry about that guys Right. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, you're back though. You're back. Okay, so I'm gonna draw some more of this enemy called the. Um... Actually, let me let me check in so far. Okay, so back to Songbringer. I can check this code in too. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. People almost always ignore Boo, right? I forgot that they had Boo. Like, what the heck is Boo? Oh, it's not even supported any longer? Wow. That's funny. They just removed Boo because they're like, uh, no one's heard of Boo and nobody's using Boo. So we're just going to remove it from Unity 5. Hope you weren't, you hope you didn't write a whole game in Boo. Sucks if you did.
J-sharp? I haven't even heard of that. <laughs> you probably shouldn't name your language Boo. <laughs> Right. So what's what's cool about Go? I ha I haven't really heard about Go that much. <laughs> right. <laughs> cool. This is checked in. Um, all right. First thing I'm gonna do is run around the game and look for some an area where we can fight these new um, burrowing enemies. And then I'm gonna, I got a few more frames to draw on these bur burrowing enemies so we can do that today with the remaining time. I'm glad to have published that Val tree though. I really wanted to, um, I really wanted to share that in case anybody else found that of value. Yeah, it was kind of reminding me of Ruby. All right, let's, um, oh, here's one. But that's not really the best area to fight them in. Oh, here, this is a pretty good one. They can burrow underneath these um, things here. So I'm gonna save and quit right there. Let's just make sure the, the player is still there. Cool. We can turn off God mode now. Hmm. Oh, that's Jai. Oh, I haven't. Cool. I'm glad they. I'm glad they actually. Um. That he actually is publishing that. That's cool. The last I heard, he was. Um. He was just. It was kind of a conceptual thing that. Um. Jonathan Blow is making transitional language for programmers of Java and Visual J++. Mm. Type inference. Hmm. That's kind of interesting putting the, the, the return value after the arguments. And this is just entirely C-like right there. Well, here's what here's what I found. I don't know. This might be it or not. I don't think it's the I don't think it's official. At least what I was reading at the top of it didn't say it's official. Oh, that's kind of nice. You don't even have to de declare. 
any variables for your for loops. Arbitrary compile time code. Compile time execution, that's kind of cool. Wow. Yeah, I agree about this. You kind of have to have a good knowledge of JavaScript before you before you learn CoffeeScript or any any of these other ones cuz it like uh cuz then you know how much it's doing for you. All right, all right, all right, cool. Nice. Um, I think I'm still going to stick with C++, though, myself, for a while. Um, I know. Who needs them all, right? Yeah. Okay, um, let me get this, uh, this guy opened up. Oh, I already got it all opened up. Cool. Well, this is the, this is the animation I want to work on. I want to work on him burrowing. So right now, if I run it, we've got the guy on the screen... And you can burrow, but it doesn't look that good. Oh, he just walks right off the screen. Come back! There you are. See that? He kind of he burrows a little. You know what would really help is if I make him burrow. When he gets to his burrow, I want him. I want you to be able to see him burrowing into the ground in a certain direction, so you kind of have an idea of what direction he was moving in when he started burrowing, so you can kind of feel maybe where he's about to come up. Um, so, but I want him to burrow a little slower. So when he goes into his actual burrow phase, sequence burrow, category num, timer, animate burrow, let's make his speed half of what it was. And then when he um, unburrows, you can set his speed back to one. So that should help a little bit. Is there a language that's good at everything? Not really. I mean, you know, it's always a trade-off. There's always trade-offs everywhere you go, you know. The higher level a language gets, the slower it tends to be. I mean, the easy, basically, the easier a language is to use, it tends to be a little bit slower. And then if you want it to be faster, you've got kind of it's a little bit harder to use or it's more manual and things like that. So everything in languages is kind of a trade-off. That's why there's that's why certain languages are good at things and other languages are good at other things. <laughs> yes, exactly. Farzer puts it another way. If there was, there wouldn't be so many languages. Oh, right, yeah. You think he's cute too? It's so funny. Yeah, totally. That's what I'm going to do. This animation will actually have a, like a molehill or some dirt coming out of it. So, but I want to see him, I want to see if it, it looks a little bit better when he's a little slower. Oh, this is kind of a, it's 
almost a bad area because he just he walks off screen always right away because of the random numbers. Oh, this time he got stuck though. That's so weird. Ah, he just walked off screen. He doesn't care. This guy does not care at all. Come back. Oh. There he goes. All right. Burrow. Do some burrowing, man. I want to see you burrow. Don't walk off the screen again. Ah. He just doesn't want to burrow. Come on, dude. Burrow. You know you want to. Dude, this is this is annoying. Yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah, he's he's based on an ant lion. And there's there's so there, the two animations I need to do are one to fix this burrow and make it look better, and two I need to make him give a I have a north and a south walking animation. So right now he's only got east west and it looks a little bit weird. Um, this area would be so much better if he didn't walk off screen. I, oh, I was just thinking area boundary. I think that's the key. I think that might work, giving him an, I don't know why area boundary is not on by default. Okay, this might, so this, ah, oh, he still walks, walks off screen. Dude, never mind. I think I got a better area to put him on. Get in the hole. <laughs> Get rid of the running code. What you mean? <laughs> People should use horses. Hey, what's up, squirrel power? It's C++, man. Yep, like Zedric said. Um, okay, I know an area that's actually better for this, and that was area... Um, I think it was 15... 15, 0. I don't know if it'll have this enemy, though. Yeah, there's no scripting language. It's all C++. Um, but the script, in essence, each entity has its own script because I have, I'm using behavior trees. So I guess, yeah, it kind of does. Like, here's the behavior tree for the droid bats. It has all these different, it's a behavior tree, so it does, you know, it has selects, it has sequences, and then each one of these nodes has different things it runs and stuff. So I guess this is kind of like my own custom scripting language for, at least for behaviors of AI. So this, what's really great about this is it puts all of the AI into, um, it's all data driven. So I don't, have, I don't have to go write a bunch of code every time I make a new AI. Right? He's super sassy. How do I deal with compile times? I pre-compile all of my game engine. So I'm using the game engine Cocos 2DX. Um, it's a cross-platform game engine, but I pre-compile it to live files, so I don't have to do that every time. Because Sometimes you can compile like 900 different source files. So I use this, uh, I use another free tool that I actually um, wrote called Rapid Game, and Rapid Game basically pre-compiles Cocos 2DX. So that's that's one way I keep my compile times really, really low. That's why when I, whenever I run my game at maximum, I only compile 22 files, and that's only if I change a header file. Right on, Squirrel Power. Good for you, man. Good for you starting to learn just a couple days ago. I hope you, I hope being here, maybe you pick up some stuff, you learn some stuff, and, and good for you. Um, what, why is it that you want to learn programming? Yeah, basically it's just a val tree. Um, this, this data is just a val tree. Yeah, basically, yeah, there's two, there's two parts to the behavior trees. One is the val tree, which I just published and that's, um, 
GitHub, um, NatWeez, Valtry. And this is what I use to parse that. And then the, uh, the, the rest of it is actually custom in, in the code. So like I go to my system, which does behaviors. And this is where it parses all those behaviors. So each, each um, one of those behavior trees gets parsed into actual integers, enums. So there's all these different words that can get parsed. And that's, that's how the language, how it parses itself into this kind of scripting language. And then this is where it runs all of that. So like if, there's, if it starts with the word if, the second word is rand, it takes the third word and turns that into a float value and returns a random based on that. So, and there's, there's lots of tutorials online for how to do behavior trees. I read some tutorials and just kind of rolled my own for this game. Oh, cool. Good for you, man. Well, good luck on that. Bastard. Yeah, what is that? Oh, that's the rough, the, um, the bastard. What's it called again? You, you guys just shared it with me today. This is, um, bastard operator from hell. Yeah, that's bastard operator from hell. <laughs> Let's leave that super, super visible. Yeah, they're great. They're really great for doing AI because in because you don't have to do once I implement all the code for the behavior tree, I never have to rewrite code so I can write AI completely as these kind of scripts. You know, like here's a behavior tree for the drill lead guy who throws rocks and stuff. Yeah, that's totally it. That's the one I use. I learned from and it took me a while to really understand it. I had to read it once at night and then read it again the next night. And then the third day, I actually finally started implementing it. Okay, so yeah, let's get them. Oh, let's force the enemy on this screen to be one of these guys. And then, whoops, and then run it. And this should be put the Zurb on this screen. And then I can start drawing this new animation. It didn't, it didn't look like it actually got any slower when he went underneath the ground, but let me just, I'm gonna start drawing anyways. So I'm gonna grab a screenshot of the game to get, to get the color of the ground. Oh, by the way, oh, I forgot to share this. Um, I got sent this flyer. If anybody is is wanting to check this, um, wanting to be on a TV show where you might get funded for your game, you should check this out. You can email videogamerscasting at gmail .com. Um So basically, there's this there's this new TV show that's going to come out where you can pitch your your game idea to a panel of judges or whatever like that. And if you're the one that wins, then um, then you get money to whatever to do your game. So I'm personally not interested in this because I, I already did a Kickstarter for this game. And this, I don't know, it just doesn't sound that in interesting to me. But maybe this might interest you guys. So I wanted to share this with you guys. I got this email from the guys at Sumla. Um, they they thought, thought of me they're like, hey, you should. Are you interested in this? But this looks like it's open to basically anyone who wants to be on TV and share their game idea and try and get funded. So if you want to do it, yeah, I think it is. It's like Shark Tank for game developers, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Sp please spread the word. I mean, if if anybody, this might be really valuable to somebody 
that needs to get their game funded, and this sounds like a rad way to do it for them. All you have to do is send a recent picture, your contact information, a brief description of your game, and why you think your game would be the next ultimate sensation. And once again, that's videogamerscasting at gmail.com. So, all right, cool. Now that I shared that, let's draw some of these. Um, yeah, it might be US only. I don't know, but probably. Yeah, I hope that helps somebody out there. Or maybe you guys have a friend that it might help or something like that. I don't know. So here's about the color of the ground. This is going to be pretty similar to the Zurub, actually. Nice. Hey, what's Arrhythmia? Is that the game you're working on? Okay, so even though that looks horrible, I'm just going to put it in the game right away to see if its colors are about right. Cool, man. What's the what's your link? I haven't have I seen this already? Project Arrhythmia. You got any screenshots or a link to your game you want to share? I'd love to take a look. Give you some support. Tell you you're awesome. Yeah, so that was a little bit light. I need to make it a little darker. Yeah, Dodge Whale, totally. It probably would be a lot better to use a particle engine in this case. Um, but I'm going to do it this way because it's really simple to start with. So I'll probably make it better at some point. Cool. Yeah, I definitely have not seen this yet. Nice website. Cool, early alpha, right on. Wow, I don't think I've ever seen a game like this. I mean, I've seen like the worm game and stuff like that, which it's, you know, it's kind of similar to, but so all those all those colored things were walls that you couldn't you can't like you'll die if you touch them or something. Oh, yeah, I know that feeling. I totally know that feeling. Sweet. Good for you. Nice. Well, please share more when you when you get your trailer updated and when you're ready, especially when you're getting ready to, you know, start releasing and stuff. Please share your links, man. Please.
Nice. Just loves to walk off the screen. That's one bug. It's on my list that no enemy should ever be able to walk off the screen. Burrow. Burrow, dude. It's so fun to burrow. Yeah, yeah. Oh, there you go. Okay, it still needs to be darker. Yeah, see, now we're entering into a color range, which is actually very similar to the color of this guy. But it probably means it's going to be about the right, the right thing. Isn't that weird when you can, when you can develop a game and then you realize there's a similar game kind of like it already? That kind of happened to me with this game when I when I found out about Hyperlight Drifter. I'm like, whoa, Hyperlight Drifter? So many similar concepts to my game, and I had never ever heard of it. But their game's not procedurally generated, so yeah, I I want him to keep moving when he burrows because I want you to kind of have a feeling for what direction he might be heading in, even though he can actually change his direction. Right. <laughs> he drops the mic, walks off the screen, and never comes back. So really all I'm doing here is just dialing in the right tone before I go and actually draw this animation, this dirt. Yeah, I know. That's why I was trying to get him to slow down, but he didn't slow down enough. So let me try that again. The Zerub. Speed one, stuck. Oh, he might have gotten stuck or something. See, I got speed. Let's put the speed in like a quarter. Make him so he can't randomly speed up and slow down. There. That's, that should get rid of all the other times where he's calling speed. So hopefully that works this time. All right, R2. Well, there you go. See, it's different. Yeah, it's different. Yeah, it's true. You're you're get yeah. Yeah. It's impossible to make a game that's not similar to other games in some way. Yeah. And yeah, as a game developer, you just gotta get over that. You just gotta admit that and let go of it. Yeah, there we go. He burrowed slow. Nice. But um I think that was too light now. This is such a fine line. Brightness 40 and 35. 35 was too... 35 was too little or too dark. And then 30, 40 was too light. So I'm going to try 37 now. Yeah, totally. Try, true, right? Facebook, MySpace. And now who uses MySpace? Nobody. Burrow. Burrow. Dude, he's not burrowing enough. I need to change the burrow. 
make it more Ah, oh, geez. How long do I have to wait? Oh, this is crazy. I gotta make Burrow way more. Let's make it, let's put Burrow's priority up higher and then Burrow's t random timer much lower. Right? <laughs> What's Google Plus? Oh. Come on, dude, do it. Yeah. Okay, that's about the right hue. Maybe maybe a tad bit darker, so we'll go 36. What's that on my B button? Oh, what was that? I think it was just, it was a, um, it was a cactus, right? Yeah, it's a cactus. So when you eat the cactus, this is what gives you your psychedelic powers. You can see secret walls and stuff. And you're invincible when you eat, eat the cactuses for a moment. Yeah, totally, right? What's up, Digital Mouse? Yeah, don't worry about that, man. Don't worry, people are... Just make your game different enough that you don't even have to worry that people people would even think that. That's my advice. All right, love. Good night, man. Good luck on your soul searching and stuff. Nice. Outdoors. Oh, I always wish I could code outdoors. <laughs> nice that's the point right i want him to definitely look like he's bursting out of the ground so i'm starting with i'm starting with blocking in all of this dirt and then i'll go and actually shade the dirt to make it look a little bit more real after this and i also want to make sure that it's also looking good as he's moving so i could either make it so he stops which was not really desirable or i could just you know make this all work so we'll see
Nice, good for you. You're both learning Unity? Awesome, Digital Malice, that's rad. Good for you. Oh, why can't? Well, it's just so bright, you know? It's so bright out there, I can't really see my screen very well. <laughs> nice, good. Nice, you've been hiking the last two weeks? That's so great. Oh, I love hiking. It's like my favorite thing. I like hiking mountains. I like to go up a not too not too tall of a mountain, but you know, like a good like five thousand foot climb. You start at some elevation, get it go up five thousand feet, maybe five miles maximum, and then five miles back. It's it's a nice mountain climb, you know. It just refreshes my whole perspective on everything. Every time. Guaranteed. 100% guaranteed or your money back. Hello, what's up? The Anderson Project. Welcome to the stream, man. It's going really well. How about yourself? Doop, doop, doop. Oh, squirrel power. Yeah. So what happens is I render it. Um, so this is a really good question, right? What's going on behind the magic is I render it, right? And that gives me ping files. So export, render video. Basically just exports a bunch of ping files, right? And then my game, pro every time I run my game, it runs this script, right? I've got a, I've got a phase inside my Xcode build which runs a script. So here's the current like build and one of my one of my phases of building is running this script dot dot raw script and dot dot raw script dot, dot shell um, is a script which basically updates all my sprite sheets. So it goes it loops over all of my sprite sheets right here dot dot raw sheets dot star dot tps and then runs texture packer to see if anything needs to be updated. So if any ping files have been changed Texture Packer will automatically be instantiated. It'll be called, and then and then it'll update the sprite sheet. So that's the magic that's going on to make it look like, you know, that's that's what's going on basically. So there. Nice, you hiked the Grand Canyon? Oh, sweet, I've always wanted to do that. Yeah, I love hot weather too. Oh, Zatrick, it's a really good, really good question, right? I, personally, I would, I would stick with the cross-platform game engine. So that's, that's why I wouldn't, I wouldn't learn DirectX or direct 3d but I would learn OpenGL because there's so much um, you know there's so many game engines that use OpenGL oh nice right on what terminal do I use I'm just using this is just um this is just terminal this is the Mac application called terminal Wow, cool. What show are you working on? XC Ben, all right, man. You demand I show you the game. Here it is, man. 
This is Songbringer. You're this character, Rock. You got a sword. It's a nano sword. This is basically it. It's like Zelda one, but it's procedurally generated. So there's this there's this whole world that gets generated based on six letters that you enter when you start the game. You've got items just like Zelda. You got a hat you can throw. You have cactuses you can eat, which give you psychedelic powers, and you can see through secret walls. And the game's coming out in about six months. There's about six months of game development left to do. Yeah, hey, you're welcome. Alright, cool. We're getting close to having this animation almost done. Just see if how it looks. All right, looks like one more frame, maybe two more frames. There's dirt flying in the air. <laughs> nice, right on. Nice. Yeah, you get to throw the top hat. How do I like Donald Trump? Um, personally, I don't want to get any political battles or whatever, but I'm not really into him politically. Yo, Zatrick, yes, I actually did. Some okay, so Zatrick, I was playing with my bamboo. I read this um I read this thing online about how to fix them right, and I I opened up my, my, my graphics tablet. It's actually still, still halfway open sort of. So like the bottom of it is like, it's got the, it's still open right here, but I, I had unscrewed all these things and taken it all apart. And I played around with trying to wiggle this cause I had super glued my, my cord to it and I couldn't get it undone. And I had bent it and played with it so much. And I'm like, I couldn't, I couldn't get it undone. So I was like, screw it. I just, I just put it all back together and suddenly it works fine now. So I don't know what I did. I just bent some wires or whatever, but now it works. So I'm hoping it stays fine. Uh, XC Ben, it is offline, but you're, it's, it's two players. So um, you have this robot friend here. Right, you're the you're the main character. You, one player one is the main character. Player two can be that little robot there. See that little robot guy? If I go and I kill an enemy, the robot guy will go and scan the enemy's body for items. So as the second player, you can play as that little robot guy, and he's gonna have more features too, and he's gonna be even cooler. And then there's gonna be a girl character too. Oh, oh, thanks, Dumb Tired. That's what it was? Cheers, man. Thanks for even looking into that. Oh, no worries, no worries. Yeah, I know. Isn't that weird? I just, all I did was bend some wires and stuff. So, yeah, XC Ben, it's not, it's not online multiplayer, but you can play with friends if they're local. So, if you have two controllers... You're good to go.
Okay, I think this ought to do it. Let's see how this looks. <laughs> GVim? Is that a is that like a, a separate kind of terminal that runs just Vim? Thanks for following. Okay. If this looks good, that'd be great. Oh, kind of. That definitely looked better than it did. Oh, it's it's like the dirt moves too slow though. Yeah, so the dirt's just moving too slow. Hmm. There's a couple options. I could make the animation slower in the actual animation. Yo, what's up, Lith? Howdy, man. Okay, I'm gonna try something simple before I do that though. I'm gonna try actually speeding up the burrow animation. It might look cool. He might actually look like he's kind of furious, furiously burrowing into the ground. Ah. Dude, Burrow, there you go. Oh, that was super fast. Burrow again. Do it. Do it. You know you want to. Why does he take so long to Burrow? Okay, anyways, it was too fast. Oh, it's going really good, man. Yeah, really great. Today I coded something cool. Well, actually this weekend I did, um, I coded this all up. It's called Valtry. So um, I put this on GitHub today. So I can share it with all y'all. It's called Valtry. It's this thing that loads, it loads data. Very simple data file format. So here's the, here's what I made today. I don't eat animals. And basically what I did is uh, this weekend is I took the existing behavior tree file format and I made it more universal so that I could put my um, property lists in that too. So now I've got animations, attributes, sounds, behavior, everything involved in creating an enemy or even an NPC or, uh, or whatever is all in one file now. It'll make it a lot easier to create new enemies and edit, new, edit an existing enemies. And so I took this file format and I made it public. I, I wrote all this code called Valtree and I just published it. So that's what I've been working on code wise. And then now, um, now that that's all done, I'm working on the art for making this guy burrow into the ground. And so I'm going to try a little bit slower. Um, not quite a 10th, but like 75% of a 10th. I, I didn't think he was joking. Fish shell? <laughs> Glorious VGA color. This looks pretty good. Oh, no, that's really awesome. It auto-completes based on your command history. Dude, that's so rad. <laughs> it bends everything? Wow. I like this. I like this. This is actually really cool. Dude. 
I love it. This is so retro. Yeah, squirrel power. I was looking for the same kind of thing. I wish there was something out there. I wish I would love to be able to put a chat overlay on my screen because I don't have two monitors either. Yeah, you're welcome, Liz. Yeah, totally. What? No way. Dude, the guy that coded homebrew is awesome. What's up, Taco? Yeah, dude, homebrew is like some seriously rad, good, good, like solidly written code. You must have just been having a bad day. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, totally. Homebrew is great. Well, um, okay, so yeah, I'm I'm totally hitting my limit here. My steam's running out. I'm getting hungry and stuff, and my girl's home. I gotta go say hi to her and stuff. So I'm gonna get going for today. But um, I kind of like this animation. It's looking a little bit better, but I do need to work on it some more. So what I work on working on here is this animation, so this guy can burrow into the ground and the dirt will fly up. And also, when he unburrows, I need to add some dirt as well. And then also I need to give him a north walking animation and a south walking animation. So, so that's what I'll be working on tonight. And um, I'm really excited about this new Val tree being done and stuff like that. So I can put all my data. All my data is so much more organized and then easy to edit and stuff now. So, so yeah, that's it for today's stream. Um, once again, thanks for thanks everybody.